Okay, so now we are still doing determinants, but we're now we're looking at adjoints and Kramer's rule. Adjoints are very useful and good. Kramer's rule is very irritating and silly. Okay, so adjoints and Kramer's rule. All right, consider a square matrix. Okay, here's a square matrix. A. Every element A, I, G, and A has a cofactor. Okay, the cofactor is C, I, C, I, J. It's the, it's the corresponding minor, which, of course, is the determinant of what you get when you cross out the row and column that, that A is on, um, and then the sign, positive or negative, depending on whether the entry is even or odd, depending on whether the rows and columns, the row and column it's in, adds up to an even number or an odd number. Okay. Now, let's make the matrix of cofactors. So for every entry we put in is cofactor. I mean, now imagine how long this would take to calculate. For every single entry in here, you have to calculate the determinant of, a, of an n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix. So this is a very difficult matrix to calculate. Well, not difficult. Easy to calculate. It takes a long time to calculate, though. Okay. But nonetheless, it's, we can certainly say uh, theorize about this matrix. Okay. Matrix of cofactors. It's called the cofactor matrix. So we'll call it C. Okay. The adjoint of A is the transpose of its matrix of cofactors. Okay, so the adjoint of matrix A is the transpose of this matrix. Which seems a bit arbitrary, but we'll see why that's important now. Okay, now here's a fact. A times the adjoint of A equals the determinant of A times the identity matrix. Okay, so it's basically A times the adjoint of A is the determinant, but of course, here on the left, you have two square matrices times by each other, so the result must be a square matrix. So it's the square matrix that has determinant of A on the diagonal. Determinant of A, determinant of A, determinant of A, that's the diagonal. Because I, the identity matrix has 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 on the diagonal. Now, determinant of A times I, that means it's going to have determinant of A, determinant of A, determinant of A on the diagonal. Okay. Uh, so the matrix determinant of A is diagonal, of course. We will show that the result is true in two parts. First, we will show that the entries on the diagonal are all determinant of A. Then we show that all the entries off the diagonal are zero. Of course, so that'll, that'll show, that'll prove that it's that. Okay, so first let's consider the, the diagonal entries. Consider the entry in the first row and first column of, of this product of A times the adjoint of A. This entry is calculated, this entry is calculated by summing the products of the entries in the first row of A with the entries in the first column of the adjoint of A. Sure, right? So the first column of the adjoint of A is the first row of the cofactor matrix, right? So we're going on this row, okay? So we are multiplying the first this entry by that entry, plus this entry by that entry, plus this entry by that entry, okay? So in other words, we're multiplying each entry by its cofactor which already should sound a lot like making a determinant, right? That's the definition of a determinant, a determinant of A. Choose any row or column, go along it, and multiply each entry by its cofactor, okay? So that multiplication is the determinant of A. Now the reason, and you don't really need to put in this step, right? You know that the cofactor is the minor with a sign, but that's not important. It's the determinant is the cofactor. That's not, a, it's not an intermediate step that's necessary if you just remember that the determinant of A is this uh, product, this sum of the product of the entry with this cofactor. And uh, the reason that they did this for the first row, for entry 1, 1, is simply because it, was a, it's, it makes it a bit clearer, maybe easier to see than if you consider, in general, actually, you want to consider entry ii, right? So entry ii, that'll be the ith row. It'll be timesing. The i row of this matrix, each entry on the i row of this matrix with each cofactor on the i row of the cofactor matrix. Okay. And of course, that'll be the determinant of, it'll always be the determinant, just calculated using a different row. Okay. So this proves that on the diagonal, we have determinant of A. Now consider off-diagonal entries. Okay, consider the entry in the first row and second column of the product. Okay, so again, we're just choosing row one, column two, as a sort of example to make it a bit easier to see which variables are. So we only have uh, one moving variable, but then we'll generalize this to, to um, row i, column j. But for now, we're doing row 1, column 2. Okay. 
So we're going to go along this row, okay, and we're going to multiply by the conjugate transpose, by the adjoint. So that means going along row 1, column 2 means going using this row, and it means using the second column of the adjoint, which means the second row of the cofactor matrix. So we go along here, multiply this, and we go along here, the second row. Multiply this by this, this by this, this by this, okay? So that's exactly what's done here, right? A11 by C21, A12 by C22, and so on to A1n by C2n, okay? Okay, now what can we do? How can we actually calculate this? So what we do is we make up a new matrix. We want, we know, we want to go and try and prove this is zero, right? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and show that this is a determinant of a matrix which has some property like a one row being identical to another, which will show us that it's determined as zero because we know that the determinant of a matrix with two rows that are the same is zero. Okay, so we introduce a new matrix. This new matrix has a second row. We have replaced the second row of matrix A with a copy of the first row, right? So we have first row, second row the same, that's the first row. Instead of having A21, we have A11. Instead of having A22, we have A12, and so on. Every other row is the same. We call this uh, matrix um, A with a funny thing on the top. I don't know what to call that. Okay. We know that the term of this matrix is zero, right, because the first two rows are the same. But we also know that we can find an expression for this term by expanding along the second row. Okay, so we expand along the second row. Okay. We expand along the second row. That means, again, I don't really see the use of doing this in terms of, mi of, of minus. Why don't I just do it in terms of, of, of the cofactors of this matrix? Okay? So the tilde meaning it's the cofactors of this matrix A, not the matrix matrix A with a tilde on it, not the matrix without the tilde on it, the original matrix. So you do that sum, okay. So it expands along the second row. But the, but the second row, okay, the second row of this changed matrix, A with a wavy line on it, it's actually the same as the first row of the original matrix A, right? Now the cofactors, the cofactors Along the second row, the co along the second row of this new matrix, the cofactors are the same as for the original matrix A because nothing outside the second row has changed, so the cofactors are the same as two J, right? So, and now this thing actually comes to, well, comes to, comes to this, right? Exactly the expression that we happen to have, right? So this expression actually it's the determinant of a matrix with two rows being the same. Okay, so that means that 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 means that this expression, being the determinant of a matrix with the first row is the same, is zero. Now, of course, we do the same thing. You can do the same thing for the i row and jth column. Let's actually try. Let's actually just let's actually just do that. Let's try doing that. Okay. So, in fact, let's uh, let's go back and let's 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 change it. Let's let's do this. Uh, let's also do the diagonal one the, for AII in general. So we're going to so just to make sure that we not do that. So we want to know what is we're trying to work out. Remember what is A times? Now I'm going. I'm not going to write adjoint of A. I don't like that notation. I'm going to write transpose of the conjugate. Okay. We're trying to work out what is the II entry on the diagonal of that. Okay. Well. Of course, you calculate that by using the first row of A. So, sorry, by using row I of A. It's a sum, of course. So, you sum row I of A, and then you go along that along that um, row, and you use the you also use the First row, the set, the ith row of the of the cofactor matrix, because the ith row of the cofactor matrix is the ith column of the adjoint. So we also have i k, right? So go from one to n. Okay, but that's just by definition, that's the determinant of a. Okay, expanded along the ith row. Uh, let's now let's do this other one. So we want to know what is the off diagonal entries. 
So what is ij where i is not equal to j? Okay, well again, it's just you go, you do this sum, okay? We're going to go along that, along the i throw and use entries. Now, there's a j here because we're doing ij, not ii, okay? But this thing is just the determinants of the matrix, which I'll call A with a wavy line on it, and A with a wavy line on it is A, but with row, what's it, row, row, so this, uh, this AIK, let's see, we have this AIK, we have the CJK, A, so A tilde is A, but with row J replaced with row I. Okay. So that this thing becomes like this, A, J, K, C, J, K, or A, a little thing on top of it. And then we have the determinant of that thing, but, the, but that thing, determinant of that thing with the two rows the same, is zero. Okay. So that just that uh, generalizes the proof for row i for entries i i and entries i j. We've shown that if i is not equal to j, i j is zero. And if we have i i j i and j where i is equal to j, we have i i. Then the entry is determined to base. So we've proven that a times the adjoint of a is equal to the matrix with. Zeros everywhere, the diagonal matrix with zeros everywhere, but determinative A on the diagonal.